It's your Locked On Flyers podcast for Monday, July 11th, your daily dose of Flyers news, analysis, and high quality content that has so much to get to on the Tony D'Angelo trade, the draft recap, dev camp is getting started. So let's dive right in. Yep. Your Locked On Flyers, your daily podcast on the Philadelphia Flyers, part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team every day. Hello, once again, I am your host, Rachel Donner. You can find me on Twitter at rmiriam. I'm here with the voice challenged Russ Cohen, who was a little bitty, busy this weekend in Montreal. He's on Twitter at Sportsology. Thanks for making Locked On Flyers your first listen every day. You can follow us on Twitter at Locked On Flyers. You'll keep up to date on all the Flyers news and our episodes. You can also email the show at LockedOnFlyers at gmail.com. Today's episode is brought to you by Bet Online. Bet Online has you covered this season with more props, odds, and lines than ever before. Bet Online, where the game starts. Yes, we're going to talk more about Tony D'Angelo. We are going to recap day two of the draft. Excited to get to that. It's Monday, so we'll have our nemesis of the week. So lots to get to today. Locked on Flyers is free and available on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Odyssey, wherever you're listening right now. Or if you're watching over on YouTube, hit that subscribe button. You'll get all of our episodes here on the Locked On Podcast Network. All right, Russ, I gave my initial thoughts on the Tony D'Angelo trade over the weekend as it happened. And of course, the Flyers got Tony D'Angelo and a seventh rounder for the second rounder in 2024, a third rounder in 2023, and our fourth round pick from this year's draft. They then are signing him to a two-year, uh, $5 million per year cap hit contract. And um, I have mixed feelings about it, to say the least. But w- what is your take? Well, I would say the the haul was a lot for Carolina. Too much to give up for the Flyers. Uh, the fact that it's only two years, okay. Uh, $5 million, all right. He does score points. At the end of the day, it's a one-year contract to see how he works out. I think so too. And, you know, I think that there is, you know, some opinion that the picks they gave up are kind of crapshoot picks anyway, but I think those are assets that could be used to do other things, you know, make other deals. And so Mm -hmm. they are worth something in the end. And I think that's important to point out. And I think that, you know, if you put all of the kind of off the ice stuff aside, which you don't have to do, frankly, and I certainly don't do that. I think it's an important element of the conversation, but I think that, you know, they're looking for him to help the power play, which is something we need to do. Mm -hmm. And he does score some points and he did have a good year offensively this past year. I just don't know that all of that, that haul we gave to Carolina plus that cap hit, are enough to make up for his defensive problems, which are significant. They are. Um, are they going to put him on the top pair when he's a third pairing guy? I don't know. Maybe. May- they might have to. Right. That's the problem with the Ryan Ellis situation is that they might have to. And when you have Ivan Provorov paired up with Tony D'Angelo, let's say on that top line, your defensive problems are going to be escalated a little bit because we know that Provi needs somebody who's a little bit more defensively sound in order to shine in the way yeah. that he can. Well, they could switch roles. They could make Provorov more defensive and it will help him, but still we'll see if the personalities fit, um, you know, towards the playoffs. That's where we saw D'Angelo kind of lose his cool again on the ice it doesn't always have to be racist, right? I'm not talking about that. I'm just right. talking about losing his cool as a hockey player. Yeah. Because he has a temper that he can't control on the ice and he's always chirping. And you saw that Brad Marchand got the best of him, but yeah, they, they moved on in that series. But 
in the end, he didn't play great hockey. He had some points, no question, but he wasn't great in the playoffs. He was not at all. And that's where my concern over the cap hit comes into play because that is a significant amount of the small amount of cap space that the Flyers have had to work with. It puts them in a lot more of a crunch moving forward into free agency and what they're able to do. Even if they're able to get rid of some cap space, it puts the Flyers in a worse off negotiating position. I think in terms of making those potential deals, because they know the flyers are more desperate now to create cap space. It just shows you what was out there for them to trade mm -hmm. for. And they jumped at it and I, I wouldn't have done it. I wouldn't recommend it. I don't think it's good that he's coming home. I think all of that's bad. I think you have to deal with his father. Uh, there's a lot of bad things with his father. Yeah, there are. And you know, if you look at some of the things he said in the press conference that they had over the weekend, the things that concerned me, um, I know the big quote of that press conference was when he said, I'm not a racist, but and I tweeted yeah. about this over the weekend. Uh, for me personally, you don't get to say that you're not racist. That's Correct. for other people to determine about you. And that's why I said, you. yeah, because you can't be the one that states that. No, you can't. And, and the other thing is that he was asked directly, what have you learned and what have you done to grow and change as a person since the days of your junior hockey and when you were accused of, of saying things that are racist? He did not have a single answer. For that question, he said he matured, but he could not point to anything specific that he learned or any work that he had done specifically to grow and mature. And to me, if you can't point to anything or any conversations you had, that's a problem because that to me means you didn't do the work. And so, again, for me personally, I don't think he's in a place where I want him on this Flyers team, especially because one of the things that has been harped on over and over again for this offseason from management and Chuck Fletcher is culture change and accountability. And if you are looking to have a culture change on this team to be in a situation where people are having a better attitude and holding each other accountable... Tony D'Angelo is not the firecracker you want to throw into that situation. No, and look, there'll be players that like him. We know that. Mm -hmm. um, I think the other issue is why did he throw in he believes in states' rights? Like, why was that important for him? I don't know. He sort and of used that as, and I'm going to tell you what, the, what that is, because everybody knows that he likes Donald Trump and whatever you feel about that is fine with me. Mm -hmm. But same, he threw that in basically kind of letting him know, letting everybody know, well, that's what he likes about that. And it's like, I don't know why he did it. Yeah. And I, I think, you know, again, uh, coming back around to people's opinions about him, I think you can have whatever opinion you want about him as a person or as a player. Um, but it's not up to anyone to determine how anybody else feels about right. him as a person or as a player and saying that he deserves a second chance or or whatnot that's up for everybody individually to decide based on the information that's out there and somebody else vouching for him is great and all and if you want to take that into account that's up to you but nobody is required to do that and I just think that, you know, from a hockey perspective, we can absolutely talk to what he's doing on the ice and we will be doing that this upcoming season. And uh, we can do that without kind of taking all of that other stuff into account. And I just want to make sure that that's clear. Yeah. I mean, look, he's been on five teams. Mm -hmm. This is fifth team. Um, once the season starts, yeah, I'm only going to be talking about hockey unless he does something or says something. Exactly. That's up, to, that's up to him. Exactly. And and I think that's the approach you have to take. And, you know, I think that looking at it overall, we'll have to evaluate it in terms of was it worth it uh, from a hockey perspective? Was it worth it from a locker room culture perspective? And, and go for there. Because, again, 
Chuck Fletcher has put a lot of assets into Tony D'Angelo and Rasmus Ristolainen, who both suffered defensively. So I'm sure we're going to have a lot to talk about defensively as the season kicks off in the fall. We will. I mean, that's, there's no way we can't. All right, we are going to get to our draft recap, day two. Lots of new prospects to talk about. I'm excited to hear Russ's thoughts on those. But first, I want to take a moment to talk to you about Athletic Greens. Uh, We started using Athletic Greens recently. I did because I wanted better gut health, more energy, optimized immune system, and I'm not really a pill or vitamin person. I wanted a supplement that actually tastes great. And with one delicious scoop of Athletic Greens, you're absorbing 75 high-quality vitamins, minerals, whole food source, superfoods, probiotics, and adaptogens to help you start your day right. This special blend of ingredients supports your gut health, your nervous system, your immune system. You get better energy, recovery, focus, and helps with aging all those things. Plus, it costs you less than $3 a day. You're investing in your health and it's cheaper than that cold brew habit you've got. And it's lifestyle friendly, whether you're keto, paleo, vegan, dairy-free, or gluten-free. Athletic Greens contain less than a gram of sugar, no GMOs, no nasty chemicals, or artificial anything while still tasting good. Athletic Greens support better sleep quality and recovery and helps with mental clarity and alertness. Right now, it's time to reclaim your health and arm your immune system with convenient daily nutrition. It's just one scoop in a cup of water every day. No need for a million different pills and supplements to look out for your health. To make it easy, Athletic Greens is going to give you a free one-year supply of immune-supporting vitamin D and five free travel packs with your first first purchase. All you have to do is visit athleticgreens.com slash NHL network. Again, that's athleticgreens.com slash NHL network to take ownership over your health and pick up the ultimate daily nutritional insurance. Okay, Russ, day two of the NHL draft for the Philadelphia Flyers. And I think they did pretty well overall. Uh, But I do have a little bit of concern in terms of the variety of players. They seem to have taken a bunch of similar players. And when you're trying to restock the system, and especially when your first round pick at fifth overall is also a forward and not a defenseman, I think that's really the only kind of ding I'll give them is that they probably needed to draft more of a breadth of players. Well, I'm going to, go out and say they were chasing size too much too. I think that was an issue with who was on the board, what they took. I think chasing size was just part of the new regime. Yeah, I I think so too. And Brent Flair in the post draft presser talked about that a little bit that, you know, they were planning to get bigger but also it just kind of matched up with their draft board. Like you just said, um, I do want to talk about that. That's third convenient, round. isn't it? Right. It is convenient. Um, I do want to talk about that third round pick Devin Kaplan, who I thought was a really great pickup for them in the third round. Um, he's a depth forward for mm-hmm. the USNT DP team. And uh, had a really solid U18 tournament that just happened. He had a goal and five assists in in six games. He's going to BU in the fall, which is a really excellent program. And um, the Flyers did say they were surprised he was still available at that time. And I was too, given that most rankings had him at least six to eight spots higher. Uh, I I wasn't surprised. I think he's a good player. Um, I think because the NCDP is an all-star team, you know, you didn't get to see the best of him. Like I saw him three or four times, but it's hard. You know, the minutes are limited. Uh, he's a really good passer. The skating's pretty good. He definitely could score down low. He plays defense. He's smart. I, uh, I still don't think he's more than a third or a fourth liner, though. Yeah, that's probably true. But I think that he'll have time to work on that. Uh, Mm -hmm. in NCAA hockey and we'll see kind of where he falls in their lineup over the next year and what kind of ice time he gets. 
Um, but I think he'll be able to do all of the necessary things to take that next step forward this upcoming year. And so I think he's in a really good position to kind of work to get the best out of himself. Yeah. I mean, I took good notes on him because, you know, I don't necessarily do that on everybody who plays for the NTDP. So, you know, he stood out enough to, to do that on the funny side is he he's a New York giants fan, but, he knows he's going to have to change that now. So that's, that, <laughs> that'll be interesting. Yes. Uh, lots of good stuff from him about uh, being from New Jersey. So, and, and his family. So we'll keep an eye on that as well. In the fifth round, of course, we didn't have the fourth round pick anymore because of the D'Angelo deal. So in the fifth round, they selected Alex Bump, who is a left winger, plays in the USHL and uh, did that at the very end of this past season because he graduated from high school uh, from Prior Lake, Minnesota. This is our good Minnesota boy that Chuck Fletcher loves. And uh, he had 83 points in 31 games in high school as the captain of that team. So again, it's high school, which is high school hockey is, especially in Minnesota, can get a little bonkers. So I tend to not weigh that too heavily moving into the pro game. But uh, again, I, I just think this is this was just candy for Chuck Fletcher. Yeah, I mean, he's got a good shot. He's got good hands. He His walk-around move that worked in high school did not work in the USHL very much. Nope. He would lose the puck. They would knock it away from him. He um, His defense needs a lot of work. He As he moved up that level, he wasn't engaged enough for me on defense. So that's something. And, you know, again, his skating needs work too. I think he's a, he's a project. Yeah, he's heading to the University of Vermont. This fall, which is a good, but not, I would say, elite, elite no. college program. It's been so, a long time. Yeah. Uh, of course, I think the most famous Vermont alum in Flyers history is John LeClaire. Yep. But uh, my cousin think, was in school when, when LeClaire was there. Nice. Nice. Yeah. I think that, you know, again, he's just going to kind of do his thing and try to fix that uh, defensive side of things and learn how to adjust his offensive game to dealing with more skilled players around him. I think that's the biggest part of, of his development moving forward. In the sixth round, the Flyers select, selected Hunter McDonald, who uh, has been playing in the USHL as well, most recently with the Chicago Steel, uh, was with the Omaha Lancers prior to that. Um, he's interesting just because he's a double overager. He's 20 years old and um, sort of finally getting drafted into the NHL. And um, he is uh, leaving the USHL and going to Northeastern University. That's a good program. In the fall, which is a really good program again. So I think that, you know, he's just a, a late bloomer who's going to have a really good opportunity at Northeastern this upcoming season and will be a project to keep an eye on. Yeah, but he's not like a Ronnie Adder late bloomer. Like, it's different. Mm -hmm. um, even though he hits and he's physical, like, according to Instat, only won 37% of his puck battles. That's not great. Um, mm -hmm. I did see him in the USHL. It was okay. Um, he played with Adam Fantilli, who's going to be a top pick next year. But I noticed on shifts with Fantilli, Fantilli was getting a little upset with him because his passing wasn't up to the same level as Fantilli's skating. So there's going to be some more he's going to have to do at this higher age level. So he, he's a long shot. Yeah, well, six round. Uh, so yeah. <laughs> that's kind of to be expected. He's got yeah. offensive ability. So, you know, we'll see. Yeah. Yeah, we shall see with him as well. The Flyers wound up with two seventh round picks in the draft again because of the D'Angelo trade. So the first one they took was their own pick. Uh, the first non-American they took in the draft, it took them until the seventh round to do that, which is, it's a choice. I will say that for sure. It is a choice. <laughs> but 
they took uh Santeri Sulku, who is a forward from Finland, 6'4, big guy, uh, has had you know some limited time with the Finnish national team, uh, U18s, and then has played in the sort of junior league in Finland as well, yeah. but is transferring over to play for Moto in the Swedish league, uh, in their U20 league next season, which, you know, I think you can kind of go back and forth in, in the Finnish league versus the Swedish league. But I think for the U20, Sweden might be a good spot for him. Yeah, I mean, he's got a solid wrist shot and a good one-timer. He's a good passer. Instat said he got 58% shots of it on net, which is good. Uh, his puck battling is bad, 39%. <laughs> so that's something in Yikes. Moto he's going to have to do something about. Um, if he lost the puck, he wasn't strong enough to get it back. So that's something that's going to take a couple of years to get that kind of strength to get it going. But again, as a seventh rounder, he's the seventh rounder I like. Let's put it that mm -hmm. way. Well, speaking of the, the other seventh rounder, it was another interesting choice of Alexis yeah. Gendron, who is the son of Flyer Scout Marty Gendron, which um, apparently Marty lobbied pretty hard for the Flyers not to take his kid. And oh, I bet he they, did. And they did it anyway. <laughs> well, they did that. You know, they've done that before, the Flyers. So, look, all to, all, hats off to Marty. He... I get where he's coming from. Look, Gendron has a good wrister. He does. He follows up his own shots. That's a positive. Even in his own league, he was getting mugged at times. Like just he's and it's you know, some guys are five foot nine and they're fine because they're elusive. He's not elusive. So he kind of was like a little bit too much of a stationary target, wasn't really engaged enough either away from the puck. So, you know. Mixed bag, really mixed bag. He's got he's got a good shot at the pucks on his stick, but you got to get it. Yeah, I, I think that's kind of where the the problem lies. And oh, way too again, many penalties. Way yes, many. yeah, he's on the negative side of things in terms of goals against when he's out there. So I just think that it, it's definitely a long shot, and he may yeah. have caused some family drama there. But. <laughs> Uh, there is so much more to talk about with these kids. We'll be keeping track of them at development camp, which is what we're going to talk about next, along with naming our nemesis of the week. But first, I want to talk to you about betonline.net. And Bet Online is your number one source for all your betting needs and sports information. You can find all the latest sports developments, league review and news, including Major League Baseball and all of the info you need leading up to next year's NFL, NBA, and NHL seasons. BetOnline is your continued source for all your wagering information from live betting to playoffs, esports, and more. And BetOnline.net remains the best spot for all of your sports scores, podcasts, and news this season. BetOnline is the fastest and easiest way to check in on all your favorite sports and events, including MMA, tennis, boxing, and golf. So head to the website today or use your mobile device to learn more about all the trends in action. Bet online where the game starts. All right, Russ. So if there wasn't enough going on, development camp starts today for the Flyers in Voorhees. And all of the new draftees except for uh, Sulku will be there. So that's good to see. You'll be able to get a firsthand look at yep. what these kids can do against the existing uh, prospects that we have. I think, you know, some of the notable returnees that'll be there to keep an eye on Zaid Wisdom, Elliot Denoye, Samu Tuomala. And for me personally, and I think you, Russ, will appreciate this as well, Mason Millman, who got stuck in Reading on the yep. defensive side of things next season. I want to see if he's got a chip on his shoulder and is kind of raring to go in terms of the different camps this year and if he'll have a shot to stick in the Phantoms next season. Yeah, and look, and, and Zade Wisdom, I tracked him all year. It took him a while to get going. Shoulder injuries are not easy to come back from. But by the playoffs, he, he was he was back. So he he should dominate this camp like he should. So And the fact that um, Cam York is there as sort of the uh, scout leader, 
is, right. is funny. So other than that, I'm really looking at Chuamala. He's really going to have to show something now because mm -hmm. he lost a year of development. That's not the Flyers fault, but it happened. They can't have that happen again. So he's going to, he's got to really have a, a terrific year this year. Yeah. I think this is where he's got to start like making a name for himself and showing what he can do up against the other prospects. I think, you know, there will be a lot of eyes on him for sure. Uh, I think uh, of note, the camp is being run by the Flyers player development crew. So none of the main coaching staff will be there. So Mike O'Connell and Shel Samuelson are going to take charge. John Riley, Brady Robinson, Chris Stewart will be there. Love that Kara Morley, who's the head coach of Princeton women's hockey, is coming back. Mm -hmm. But in perhaps the happiest part of this whole thing, Sam Moran is going to be joining the player dev crew and helping coach this camp, which makes me so happy to see him back involved. No, that's good. I mean, look, I like Shell. I like John Riley. McConnell does a great job. He's mm -hmm. really, really, really good. I think this is good. I think, you know, they've expanded their crew for this. That's good. I think that's, that's a very positive, big positive. The negative is, Nobody from Lehigh is there. Yeah, I, I think that's a big part of it. And maybe there's some news uh, that will happen on that front this week. We'll see if that happens. Because you remember, you know, Scott Gordon would be there. Mm -hmm. You know, so Lappy's not, I guess. Yeah, that is a, a huge question mark. Uh, talking about the Phantoms specifically, if you look at the camp list and roster, you see three names there that are listed as AHL deals. So perhaps these guys have phantoms contracts that are news that, again, did not really find out about from the Flyers. But Colin Felix, Adam Karashek, and Will McKinnon, who played in Reading in the playoffs, for them apparently now has an AHL deal. Okay. He just graduated from the University of New Hampshire and then got a, a late season contract with Reading and really impressed there. So I th they gave him an AHL deal, which I think is, is good to see. Uh, but the Phantoms are making moves. Uh, they're just not really talking much about it right now. I mean, Inc tell the fans. The yeah. fans need to know. Yeah, including re-signing their captain, Cal O'Reilly, to another contract, uh, which was not really spoken of in Flyers land. They did for the Phantoms, but... Of course. Um, we also have some camp invitees, as they always do. Uh, I think the biggest name on the list is Chase Primo, who's obviously Keith Primo's kid and brother of Caden. Uh, I think that was a little bit of a gimme, but we'll see what he can do. No, I mean, I've seen him play before. Mixed reviews. Mm -hmm. We'll see where he's at now. Yeah. And obviously there's some goalie situations happening, but we did talk about Jonathan Lemieux previously getting a camp invite. And the other invite is Yanev Peretz, who is the goalie from Quinnipiac. Who, that's a pretty solid mid program. They, in college they've had Canada. goalies before that did really well, but didn't do very well at the next level, at the NHL level. Yeah. So we'll, we'll see what those guys can do as well. All right, we are going to name our nemesis of the week now. And if you're newer to the program, every Monday we look at who or what in hockey is bothering us for this upcoming week. And last week we talked about draft anxiety a lot. And I think there's a lot of nemeses for this upcoming week. Uh, for me personally, you know, more Tony D'Angelo drama, if that happens. We have free agency coming up. We also have, you know, today is the RFA qualifying offers day. So what's going to happen with that? So many things to have nerves about. So all of that together. Well, let's is let's also like this week. magnify that with, with like the RFA qualifying things. It's Morgan Frost. We need to know what's going on. Yep. That is the big one. Absolutely. 
wrapping up with our flyers fun thing um i loved devin kaplan's interview that the flyers put out with him post getting picked he just had the biggest smile on his face he talked a lot about him and his brothers and the new york versus philly fandom issues that you talked about earlier russ such seems like just such a great kid no he he's terrific um i did want to mention the nemesis for me is not hockey related it's actually food related. And that's because, you know, at the rink, they give you snacks. And so like the Lay's chips there are like what Lay's chips used to be in the United States. They're a hundred percent better. Uh, a Mars bar there is a Milky Way and it's way better than the Milky Ways here. A lot more caramel. So my nemesis is what the hell is happening with the U S um, food sourcing, especially in snacks and sweets. Well, they allow a lot more artificial stuff in the States than they do in other places. And that's why our candy is not a, as good as it used to be. All right. That will do it for today's show. We have so much more to talk about this week. It's going to be jam packed. We're going to talk more about development camp. There's so much to do with free agency and what trades the flyers could potentially do. So we will be getting to that all this week. As a reminder, we always want to hear from you. Send us your reaction to the D'Angelo trade, your reaction to what the Flyers did at the NHL draft, your mailbag questions. You can tweet us at Locked on Flyers. You can also email us at Locked on Flyers at gmail.com. I am Rachel. I'm on Twitter at rmiriam. That's R-M-I-R-I-A-M. I'm Russ uh, at Twitter at Sportsology, S-P-O-R-T-S-O-L-O-G-Y. You made us your first listen today. Now make your second listen Locked On NHL. Locked On NHL experts give you a daily 30-minute podcast on all things NHL all year long. You can stay up to date on everything in the hockey world. Locked On NHL, your daily 30-minute NHL podcast. Thanks again for listening and have a great day.